So today we're going to take a look at ADHD, a hunter in a farmer's world. Uh, the guy who wrote this has kind of made it uh, a bit of a large project. This is, there are several editions of this book, and so it's a fairly old book. And what this book does in its overarching uh, thing is kind of introduce a metaphor or a model for looking at ADHD, where instead of looking at it like a disorder, you're looking at it as being a case of people that are perhaps not well adapted to the type of soup we're swimming in in terms of our civilization. And so the metaphor is this. Um, there are farmers, and those are people who are good in today's modern society, and then there are people who are more like hunters. These are the ADHD people who have a certain skill sets that are better tuned towards perhaps a different society or certain skills. Like, so for example, being a security guard, um, being inattentive or being like on the lookout for stuff is actually a bit of a useful thing. And so this reframe of it not being something that is wrong with you, but you just being different is the central shtick of the book. Now, what the author points out in several different areas and in several different ways is that looking at it like a disorder uh, is likely to produce negative effects in terms of people's self-esteem or their, you know, uh, ability to kind of think outside the box in terms of how to use it as a, like an asset as opposed to just thinking of it as like, oh, it's this bad thing, it's this disorder. Because it is a disorder according to the DSM. And so this is a bit of a different way of looking at it, which I think is quite empower empowering and powerful. But on the flip side, it's not... Um, in my mind, he doesn't necessarily like uh, blow the like traditional mainstream understanding of um, ADHD out of the water so much as it's a different perspective, not like a complete rewriting of what's going on, which is um, to some extent when someone like says, oh, all this is wrong, you always have to regard it with a little bit of suspicion. Um, there was like one part in it where he talks about multitasking specifically and says ADHD people are just better suited towards multitasking. And I remember reading some, like, more recent scientific literature on how multitasking basically isn't a thing. It's just, like, um, trying to do two tasks at once is just uh, not productive was, like, what this study found. Um, or, like, it might have been a collection of studies. But more recent research um, seems to counteract that point. And so that, that was one thing I noticed when reading where I was thought maybe his fidelity towards the uh the information might not be so good but overall the author seems to be have a pretty good grasp of the information and so okay um another point that the author made that i thought was particularly it's a good point to make whenever it's like available and it's always one that is thought provoking is you know you can follow the money um people there's a financial incentive to have everyone think of ADHD as a disorder and one that needs constant medication. And so, um, speaking from experience with ADHD, because uh, uh, I've been medicated for it before, um, you know, this part like resonated with me quite a bit. I've also been medicated for depression. And I think that um, there are, when you look at the people who are funding the studies for these disorders, Oftentimes they are the companies that the pharmaceutical companies that produce the drugs that you would be on a subscription basis to. And so, you know, when you take an antidepressant and you take it for uh, your entire life, basically, even upping the dose, they make gobs and gobs of money. The same thing when you take, you know, a stimulant for ADHD or whatever Adderall. Um, what did I take? I think I took... Concerta. Um, and so it's this thing where if you look at where the money is going and who's funding the studies, you know, um, you can you can wag your finger at a little bit of funny business um, just in terms of where the financial incentives are. Um, and the financial incentives are to say that you are damaged and there's no work around 
and that you, what you need is medication is just a problem in the brain and we can fix it with me some medication which is uh i think the same narrative is pushed with depression quite a bit um you know there's like a study that shows that only a quarter of the effect of um the efficacy of antidepressants is the pharmaceutical aspect of the drug itself i think like half is um the placebo and then a quarter is them people just getting better naturally um because when people are depressed they also tend to often get better naturally um and i know quite a bit more about the the depression like literature on this sort of thing but i found it uh particularly striking and it had not been something i had considered which kind of this is the story of the book um is that uh, there are perhaps a lot of things that one has not considered in the ADHD, like literature, like information, like sphere, that this book can expose you to quite a bit. It offers up, um, I think like the first half is roughly uh, talking about the perspective, and then the second half is like, uh, you know, practical applications. Um, okay, I want to talk more about the depression like stuff, but that's like kind of off topic. Um, Another point that I found particularly interesting about the book um, was writing, not writing off, explaining a lot of ADHD type of behavior as just, um, you know, a desire to like feel more alive or just a need for more stimulation. And particularly striking was um, talking when they talked about procrastination uh, to me, because uh, if you want to feel the stress of like something being super last minute, uh, procrastination actually becomes like an intelligent looking strategy. And I thought that that was interesting. And another one is overcommitment, which they referenced up there, um, the author. And then uh, another last part is that uh, ADHD, people with ADHD uh, tend to be a lot more uh, risk taking or risk prone, or they're more willing to take risks. Um, I'm not particularly included in this party, but um, this also makes sense. And again, the author takes point care to frame it as a being different, not being disordered, where there are certain skills or certain jobs where, you know, being inattentive or easily distracted is useful because it allows you to notice stuff better. You know, I, I actually didn't talk too much about the metaphor and perhaps it's worth unpacking. Like, if you are a hunter, you know, and you go out in the wilderness, having, like, a head on a swivel and not focusing on anything, one task, is very important so you can notice bunches of different things. So noticing different things is important. And then further, being present in the now and not thinking about the future is also important because you have to rapidly adapt to your surroundings. Whereas you compare this to a farmer, a farmer needs to think ahead because they need to plant the crops now in order to do stuff later. And also they need to kind of keep their head down and do like one task and stick to it, you know, planting the seeds. It's the same task over and over and over in a line. And so it's this, uh, like, it, oh, I forget the word he uses, but he, like, makes up a term to refer to people, like, a disorder that's, like, the farmer disorder, you know, where uh, the people, like, they can't notice new things when stimulus enters their environment. Uh, they struggle to, like, adapt to quickly to different change. And so um, that's a part of the reframing. Another is like valorizing entrepreneurs who are, um, you know, fit the ADHD profile. Okay. And so, um, yeah, let's get into the ratings. Uh, so for utility, I give it a seven. I think this book is pretty useful if you... Um, so rating the utility of this book is a bit difficult because I think if you don't have ADHD or there's no one around you who has ADHD, that the book is not particularly useful. Um, I think if you do have ADHD, that the book is quite useful. So I scored an overall of a seven, kind of under the assumption that you are not going to get this book if you don't have ADHD or like someone around you, like you would just never touch it. But 
being exposed to this perspective, I think, is uh, quite useful. Um, especially, yeah, I really wish I had uh, been exposed to this type of perspective when I was a kid, because I would, like, uh, beat myself up for a lot of things, uh, and just, like, uh, I was very easily distracted as a kid. I did not want to do the schoolwork and the busy work that, like, had been assigned to me and this sort of thing. I wanted to go off and do my own thing. Uh, I read a lot. I studied a lot on my own. Uh, I got good... Well, I did well on tests, but I just didn't do any of the, like, homework or anything. And so, um, you know, this fits the profile pretty well. And, okay. Uh... But I wish I had been exposed to it earlier because I think it would have helped a lot with, you know, how I perceive myself having this sort of story where it's not necessarily like a mess up. It's just different and like life might just be a lot different because of um, how I'm different. I use different entirely too many times in that sense. Okay, novelty. So for novelty, I think if you've never been exposed to this perspective, it's actually quite useful. Um, it doesn't really... You maybe can get, like, a lot of the use of this book, both the utility and the novelty, out of, like, the first chapter or something like this, where a lot of the rest of the book is kind of, like, expanding and talking about different things, like, stuff that's specific. Like, I think there's a chapter on sleep, like, just specifically uh, sleep as it relates to ADHD. So, um, there's that. Like, a lot of it's probably front-loaded in terms of the usefulness of the book. For entertainment, I gave it a 5.5. It's okay. The, the the style is a little bit engaging. Okay. Um, <laughs> that style's a five. Yeah, uh, style's a five. Um, you know... Yeah. Uh, like, they, they reference some stuff that's interesting, you know, and, like, there's a section where he talks about, like, Steve Jobs and, like, uh, other... What, Edison, like, other people with ADHD... Um, I guess as, like, a performative thing, I should just change the subject constantly while doing this review. <laughs> it's, like, uh, ADHD thing. Anyways, um, just thinking about that. Uh, so, readability, you give it a 6.5. Pretty easy to cruise through. Um, you know, like, I imagine, I think this is either the second or the third edition of this book. I imagine as you do more and more editions, the readability goes up and up considerably um maybe this should score even higher uh i don't perhaps it should have scored higher and then for interest i gave it a six uh, most of the interest is on the back of like the novelty of this like metaphor of looking at it as adhd people are not disordered they're just hunters in a farmer's world um and so it's not extremely interesting throughout but the premise is very interesting and so i scored it a six um, for an overall score of 6.17, I believe. Ah, my mouse is unplugged. Uh, so, you know, uh, pretty solid. I, as far as recommendations go, I would recommend anyone with ADHD to, at the very least, familiarize themselves, uh, with this sort of, you know, like, you don't necessarily have to read the whole book, but maybe read a synopsis or a description or look up some more information about the perspective. I think the the model of the way of looking at the world like this is extremely useful if you have ADHD. Um, and then if you're still interested in reading more, give this book a try. If you don't have ADHD and there's no one like close to you has ADHD, I would not recommend reading this book at all. Um, I think there are, you know, more entertaining, more interesting, more like useful like models of the world that you can pick up elsewhere uh and so if you don't have adhd specifically and so on that basis you know if you're not in that boat um i would not give this a read uh and that's that has to be the most straightforward recommendation as far as um discussion goes does anyone here have adhd and ha are they familiar with this um kind of metaphor for looking at things and do you have any examples of something that having ADHD or being easily distracted at, uh, by makes you better at? All right, have a good one.